Hi. In the previous session, we have discussed about different types of IT companies along with their interview process. In that session, we have discussed about Tier 1 companies, Tier 2 companies, and Tier 3 companies. And we have also discussed about what are the focused areas for each of these types, concepts that we need to prepare for Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3, along with their package ranges. At the end, we have also covered the importance of trying for Tier 1 and Tier 2 companies in the long term. With that in mind, now let us focus on Tier 1 and Tier 2 company preparation. So, in this session, we are going to have a detailed discussion on Tier 1, Tier 2 company preparation. Let us start our discussion by listing down the concepts that we need to prepare for Tier 1 and Tier 2. In the previous session, we have discussed that. For Tier 1 and Tier 2 companies, uh, we need to prepare data structures and algorithms. We need to be proficient in uh, any programming language and specially preferably OOPS language. like uh, Java, Python, C++ or any other. Having OOPS knowledge will give us the broader view uh, while solving the problems. Uh, that is it. Along with that, we need to prepare uh, design patterns. Any scripting language uh, knowledge like uh, shell scripting, Perl, Python, or any other scripting language. Along with that, computer science uh, fundamentals, so in this one we need to prepare little uh, operating system concepts. In operating systems we need to prepare uh, memory management. synchronization concepts file system related stuff and database management systems within this we need to have knowledge on uh, normalization, acid properties and a few basic SQL queries you need to understand how things work on that and if you have time you can even prepare ER diagrams like uh, how do we create uh, link the tables and um, um, data actually between the different tables like how do we join the tables with those uh, ER diagrams and in the networking we need to prepare uh, OSI layers DNS stuff domain name servers IP supernetting subnetting concepts Again, if you have um, a networking basics, for example, if you set up your own website, uh, during that we might need to give a lot of input details like um, what is the domain name that you are going to set up, what is the domain name server IP. Uh, and if you if you go through all this process, uh, it will give a lot of insight into the networking basics. So I suggest you uh, to set up any, I mean, uh, website of your own 
so that uh, you'll get I um, mean feel of um, how networking protocols are working and at the same time you will have your own website it costs very less like um, maximum 150 rupees or 200 rupees just for trying to understand the concepts like you can go to uh, godaddy and the purchase simple domain just for testing you can delete it if you don't need anymore at least uh, try to understand even if you don't create your own website try to understand how networking protocols works uh, with domain name servers voice layers and other stuff so in this one so we have seen um, data structures algorithms any programming language design patterns and along with this we have also covered general IT trends or technologies we can say it means like uh, how the companies are moving uh, which technologies they are using uh, for their products like um, many companies are running behind uh, big data cloud computing virtualization concepts uh, docker containers build automation how companies are running their builds like uh, Jenkins and any other uh, DevOps concepts Again, remember, uh, specific. I mean, um, especially the tier one and tier two companies, they fo don't focus on general IT trends and uh, computer science fundamentals. But we are listing down because it is very much needed uh, while solving the problems. I mean to say, like, uh, if you don't understand uh, the, I mean, these co concepts, uh, if you don't have computer science fundamentals or uh, knowledge on these uh, uh, ongoing technologies you'll feel little difficulty while solving some problems but it is not compulsory but uh, having that knowledge is very much important but uh, I mean what I mean to say is uh, tier 1 tier 2 companies they focus is on computer science fundamentals as you can see the concepts that we listed down here are uh, part of computer science fundamentals so the tier 1 tier 2 companies they focus on uh, computer science fundamentals okay uh, there, um, for tier 1 and tier 2 companies we don't have to run behind any programming language because uh, these interviews are not uh, language specific but uh, they focus on uh, computer science fundamentals Be, uh, keep that in mind for example if you go to Microsoft Google Amazon interviews even if you say that uh, I have only knowledge of C++ or Java even if the interviews are into other languages they usually don't worry so much on that that is why uh, whatever um, um, the programming language that you are comfortable with you can go with that you don't have to worry so much on that so the interviews are not um, um, and particular about uh, your programming language they always all look at is like uh, how you are thinking whether you have the computer science fundamentals or not whether you are thinking logically or not so that is their uh, main uh, area of focus during the interviews okay so these are the concepts that we need to prepare for tier 1 and tier 2 companies as I said like for tier 2 companies uh, along with this one uh, we need to prepare uh, C, C++ interviews and Java interviews apart from that there is not much difference so if you prepare for tier 1 companies you don't have to again uh, prepare for tier 2 companies except that you have to prepare for C, C++ Java interviews questions that's all but the remaining concepts are same what I mean to say is like if you prepare data structures and algorithms for tier 1 that automatically covers the uh, things that are needed for tier 2 as well even though the scope of tier 2 companies um, on DS and Algos is less but the automatically you will be comfortable with um, DS and Algos entry questions in their uh, tier 2 companies that is why if you focus for tier 1 company entry preparation these are enough Apart from this, uh, prepare language specific entry questions like uh, Java entry questions, C, C++ entry questions, Python entry questions and all. Apart from that, there is no difference. Okay. Now, so now let us see what are the books that are required for tier 1, tier 2 companies. As I said like, so for tier 1 companies, we have 
data structures algorithms made easy it is in cc++ uh, implementation and uh, same thing in java we have java edition this is in uh, java implementation and we have um, this is for in python edition these are the three textbooks that we have for uh, tier 1 companies data structures and algorithms made easy which is in cc++ so if you are on uh, if you are into cc++ go with that data structures and algorithms made easy in java that is java edition in thinking with python is in the python uh, edition uh, as i said like uh, don't buy multiple books tier 1 and tier 2 companies they usually don't focus on language any language is fine that is why you uh, don't buy multiple books of um, data structures and algorithms because um, except the code everything is same the content is same you will feel uh, redundancy while reading the books so that's why don't buy the books for example if you want to uh, look at java code with a c c++ book for example you might have uh, bought a c c++ edition and you want to look at java i mean java code for that you can go to a github location of career monk where you can see the code of uh, java python and c c++ that way you don't have to buy mean multiple books of uh, same address uh, section or got the uh, for this one you don't have to read any specific book just uh, basics of uh, mean um, uh, any oops language is fine <laughs> mean inheritance uh, polymorphism all the basics of oops concepts again even though i am saying java python c++ uh, you don't have to remember the function names class names uh, for interviews just uh, i mean the usage is enough sample programs you can run that is enough for uh, i mean the tier 1 tier 2 uh, companies now coming to design patterns here we have peeling design patterns the textbook is um, peeling design patterns so this has covered the design interviews question specifically as i said like um, these interview books actually data structure all the three editions cc++ java and python editions they are uh, from the interviews point of view even if you want to learn the concepts that is fine but if you want to uh, learn the data structure and algorithms very deep and uh, and if you want to go inside of uh, every data structure understand the um, consequences of using any data structures uh, this book might not be enough so in that case you are, you can go for a clr or any other textbook which have a very detailed explanation in each of the concepts so if you are preparing for interviews these are the textbooks if you want to um, prepare in deep or if you want to understand the concepts in deep go for clr from the data structures point of view similarly on design patterns this book is only for the interviews point of view if you want to understand uh, i mean every data design pattern in detail you can go for gang of uh, four textbook now for uh, next one is scripting languages for scripting languages also we don't have to refer um, any textbook uh, to understand uh, shell or python or uh, main pol scriptings just understanding how scripting works what is the difference between compiled based languages and scripting languages when do we go for scripting languages and when do we go for c++ java or python that means while uh, selecting the programming language for a project how do the architects make the decision whether we should go for c++ whether we should go for java python or scripting language if you have that understanding that is enough along with this one um, the next one is uh, computer science fundamentals operating systems database management systems and uh, networking again as i said like interviewers will not ask uh, i mean uh, what is memory management and what is virtual memory and uh, what is normalization they usually they don't ask such questions they assume you, are, you know the basics you know the you have the fundamentals based on that they frame the questions and keep i mean um, they will be asking the questions around that what i mean to say is for solving the problems having computer science fundamentals is very much needed and compulsory 
so if you if you don't understand any of these concepts uh, please refer them again from any standard textbook or um, any online resources uh, just be comfortable with um, these concepts for this networking book um, we have um, elements of computer networking textbook but um, buying the book is not much needed uh, if you understand those concepts this book is mainly also useful for gate students as well and the final one is um, uh, general uh, latest it trends technologies uh, if you i mean you need to understand uh, what technologies the companies are using for their products uh, because um, most of the products they are going with uh, latest it technologies uh, for faster development and um, i mean uh, quick uh, deliveries so i mean try to understand these concepts these are the technologies that most of the companies are using uh, for their products so even if you don't understand those concepts try to refer any online resources uh, and be comfortable with this so these are the common things uh, um, that are required for tier 1 and tier 2 company interview preparation and uh, especially for tier 2 companies uh, as i said like if you are in, if you are trying for tier 1 companies get any of these one along with the design patterns textbook if you are preparing specially only for tier 2 you can go for coding interview questions and it is only for um, uh, tier 2 if you buy this uh, coding interview questions you don't have to buy uh, peeling design patterns because the design patterns um, uh, also covered in this book but uh, all the implementation of this coding entry question is in c c++ so the design patterns uh, are also discussed in the c++ c c++ programming language and coming to this one pro um, peeling design patterns the code is given in um, java so this book has java implementation of design patterns uh, this book has c c++ implementation of design patterns so this coding entry questions along with the data structures algorithms uh, it also covers a lot of other concepts like uh, uh, networking database management systems operating system concepts whatever we discussed in this one the computer science fundamental concepts were also covered in this coding entry questions okay so these are the our focused areas that we need to prepare for uh, tier 1 and tier 2 in uh, in detail i hope uh, you all understand what all the things that are required for tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 data structures and algorithms be proficient in any programming language preferably oops language have understanding of design patterns any scripting language knowledge is required any of these along with the computer science fundamentals and um, be comfortable with all going uh, it technologies now let us focus on data structures and algorithms so what are the concepts actually even though we said like uh, data structures and algorithms within data structures and algorithms what are the things that we need to prepare how to prepare data structures and algorithms in all our books uh, we have covered all the required topics for data structures and algorithms including c c++ java and python editions so uh, these are the table of contents uh, from our books so first we covered uh, different uh, asymptotic uh, notations uh, big o omega and theta amortized analysis and all the required basics for um, analysis of algorithms uh, let me add a point here usually tier 1 companies and tier 2 companies what they do is they give some interview question for that question you might be coming up with some solution let us say with some time complexity space complexity remember most of the tier 1 and tier 2 interview questions you know all time complexity space complexity asymptotic analysis so we have already kept some videos on that you can refer them what i mean to say is uh, they will give some question for that question you might be giving some solution with some time complexity and space complexity say that is the brute force solution so for every question they keep on asking can we improve the time complexity can we improve the space complexity so for that way even if you give second solution they keep on asking can you improve the time complexity space complexity that way every interview in tier 1 and tier 
for data structures and algorithms question they will give some question and uh, we have to give multiple solutions with the different time complexity and space complexity are you getting my point for example um, let us take a linked list problem they might be giving how do you find uh, whether there is a loop in a linked list or not you might be giving some solution for that solution they will give some time complexity and space complexity for the same question um, they will be asking is there any other way of solving the same problem so the discussion will be like um, trying to find multiple solutions for the same problem so with different time complexity with uh, and space complexity so that's why in our textbook also every every um, chapter every problem we have followed the same pattern like we take some problem we give multiple solutions with different time complexity and space complexity as an example consider this problem the problem is finding the merging node the common node of the two different linked list due to some coding error there could be some um, merging of two different linked list nodes and from there uh, the nodes are common how do you find the starting of the common nodes the merging node of the two different linked list for this problem we have given some brute force solution and for that we have got some time complexity and space complexity as an improvement to that for the same problem we are trying to give different uh, solution with different time complexity and space complexity uh, which is based on sorting technique now if you look at the next uh, solution the same uh, for the same problem we are trying to find different solution with a different uh, data structure that is by using hash table that means uh, similarly we are trying to solve the same problem with a stack now we are try trying to solve the same problem with different data structures the idea here is for a tier 1 and tier 2 company interviews they will be asking some question we will give some brute force um, solution for that with different uh, with some say time complexity and space complexity they will be keep on asking you can you improve the problem uh, solution with different time complexity and space complexity so the so the interview process or the interview pattern is very much similar for each of the tier 1 companies we get some question we have to give some brute force solution with time complexity and space complexity for the same problem we keep on giving the multiple solutions with different time complexity and space complexity and uh, for each of the problem in our books we have followed the same pattern so for example if you take another problem uh, say let us say uh, this one finding nth node from end of the linked list for this one also we have given some brute force solution we are trying to improve the solution with uh, a different time complexity and space complexity so for every problem we followed the same pattern we take some problem what are the multiple solutions what are the I mean um, enumeration of all possible solutions so what i mean another solution is even though we have given uh, solutions for most of the problems but uh, try don't try to remember the solutions for any of the problem because uh, if you get a new question uh, you will get confused if you remember the solutions just look at the pattern first we are trying with the brute force then we are trying with sorting then we are trying with hashing then we are trying with stacks then we are trying with queues then we are trying with linked list trees graphs that way for every problem if you try with different data structures we will try to get different solutions and automatically we will get different time complexity and space complexity so if you follow this pattern what are with the given question what are with the given question you will ultimately give minimum of 3 4 solutions that is the objective of our uh, textbooks that's why don't remember the solutions try to understand the pattern how are we solving the problems so that uh, the same pattern you can apply for any new problem and uh, that will give the solutions automatically for example uh, so let us say for a given problem you have given 3 4 solutions and you are not able to give the best solution even if you are not able to give the best solution any interviewer in tier 1 or tier 2 they will not reject you because you have already given the three four solutions with this pattern and uh, they will think that you are uh, you are in the correct direction and um, you are thinking logically uh, they will not reject you in any round that's why if you follow this pattern it is uh, the success rate of uh, interviews is very high but if you say that uh, for a given problem if you say that i don't know the solution uh, they will ultimately uh, automatically reject you that's why for any problem even if you don't know the solutions try to solve them with different data structures with different um, time complexity and space complexity so that uh, the interviewers um, uh, will feel comfort um, in judging you 
they will not reject you in any round that is why our books are famous uh, because uh, the pattern is there uh, don't remember the solutions try to remember the patterns how are we solving the problem so that you can apply the same pattern for new problems as well so that is the another thing so for within data structures and algorithms uh, we need to prepare all these concepts whichever are uh, required for tier 1 companies we have already covered so link list tags queues trees within trees we have binary trees generic trees uh, uh, expression trees a tree i mean balance binary search trees balanced binary search trees avl trees priority queues how do, what are the different ways of implementing priority queues min heap max heap uh, there are specially designed questions for uh, heap given a min heap how do you find the max element or uh, given a max heap how do you find the minimum element a disjoint sets graph algorithm sorting within sorting we have uh, linear sorting algorithms and comparison based sorting algorithms searching within searching again uh, we have um, linear search binary search and interpolation search symbol tables hashing uh, string algorithms algorithmic techniques greedy uh, divide and conquer and dynamic programming in this book we also covered why only three techniques uh, there are another te there are many other techniques Uh, why we are not going for that we have already discussed um, all these concepts in our textbooks especially for tier 1 and tier 2 you should not leave any chapter you should not leave any concept from our books because very much needed all the concepts are very much needed that's why don't leave any uh, main concepts uh, for while preparing for tier 1 and tier 2 especially uh, dynamic programming uh, divide and conquer uh, backtrack i mean uh, recursion and backtracking um uh, a uh, greedy algorithms But try to understand all these concepts so in the within dynamic programming we have given 40 40 plus uh, problem solution and whatever the required um, uh, i mean uh, uh, general concepts other uh, non ds and algos problems we try to cover it in the miscellaneous concepts like bitwise hacking and uh, many other uh, matrix related problems and all that so from data structures and algorithms point of view these books are enough you don't have to prepare any other and uh, from uh, others like um, design pa design patterns point of view you can prefer peeling design patterns all the complete book is required especially uh, especially uh, for experienced if you are a fresher you can refer online resources you don't have to i mean read the complete book now let us spend few minutes on um, how to use these books for uh, effective use uh, these are the common tips that i usually share uh, give one complete reading of the book uh, to get clear understanding of topics because um, for example if a lecturer is giving uh, a professor is giving very good lecture in the class and if the lecture is very good students will usually understand but they will not get the control on the concepts so similarly if the book is good uh, if the reading is good you will understand the concepts but uh, they will not you will not get control on the topics first uh, to understand the concepts give one reading and uh, try to give multiple readings of the book or the concepts so that you will get control on the topics so what i am suggesting is uh, just to get the understanding give one complete reading and in the subsequent readings um, you will get the control on the problems for example same problem if you read multiple times you will get control for example if they change the problem statement little bit the same problem even if they, there is a change in the problem statement you can easily identify them you can easily map them and uh, try to give the solutions for the uh, given new problem that is why try to give multiple readings of the uh, textbook so that you will get control on the concepts not the just understanding and uh, try to solve all the problems in our book don't leave any concepts because specially for tier 1 and tier 2 companies all the concepts are very much required and uh, control is required not just the understanding that is why give multiple readings and don't leave any concepts from our books and uh, i keep getting the queries like uh, whether i should uh, so try it on the missions uh, before the interviews or not uh, you don't have to try all the questions on the mission to see whether they are working or not or whether you understood properly or not uh, first in the after giving two three readings of the books you can write on paper whether you are able to solve the problems or not and once you are comfortable with that you can select few problems and write on the systems you don't have to try each and every problem on the system okay 
and especially for uh, dyn- i mean uh, tier 1 and tier 2 companies uh, don't leave any subject any concept uh, especially dynamic programming string algorithms hashing greedy algorithms uh, divide and conquer you have to prepare each and every topic of our book don't leave any concepts along with this uh, prepare design patterns as well so what uh, the ultimate um, uh, note from this one is give multiple readings of the book get control on the concept and uh, try to, uh, try the solutions on the paper and uh, then you can select few problem solutions uh, to try it on the system okay now uh, let us spend few minutes on uh, what are the tips that we can use uh, during the interviews let us say you all prepared um, the concepts that we discussed now and you are uh, having control on the concepts now let us see some tips that we have to i mean follow during the interviews for example if the interviewer asks a question um, what is the best way of uh, expressing the solutions in uh, tier 1 and tier 2 companies as i said like uh, interviewer will be asking uh, one data structures and algorithm question and one design question and uh, in the last session we also discussed that for design question um, usually there is no fixed solution we just need to keep the communication going uh like uh, why, why we are using some specific design pattern uh, what is the advantage of going for that for example um, how do we design grocery store how do we design movie theater if you are, if you get such questions usually i mean the interview will be posing the new questions like how do you apply combo offers and all such questions to solve such kind of problems we have some specific design patterns and uh, to while giving the solutions you can keep explaining them i am going for this design pattern because it has some advantage and we can apply the combo offers or we can apply the we can you know, update the classes and objects easily so you can present uh, i mean the solution um, by communicating or by explaining your uh, thought process by using different uh, design patterns but when in the in the case of uh, data structures and algorithms unlike data structure i mean design patterns uh, we have fixed solutions for most of the design i mean data structures and algorithm questions so if you have multiple solutions for the same problem uh, unless you keep explaining them why, what is the solution and why we are going getting different time complexity and space complexity the interviewer cannot understand that's why try to explain um, how you are thinking what is uh, what uh, mean what is the thought process behind uh, 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 this problem solution whatever you are uh, getting into your mind and during the interviews um, just try to follow these uh, small tips which will help you i mean um, Uh, resolving or giving the solutions effectively the first and foremost one is explain the algorithm so whenever you get some question uh, try to explain um, the solution or algorithm whatever you are thinking about that solution whether it is brute force or whether it is an improvement or anything uh, during the course of complete interview question you get some question you are giving some brute force approach and you are trying to improve the pro- same problem and solution so for every solution that you are giving or proposing try to explain whatever the uh, solution that you are giving write comments while coding the solution or algorithm uh, uh, try to put uh, comments at every important block of the code yard base conditions put error checks as much as possible and uh, before the algorithm uh, as i said like uh, explain the algorithm and also put um, algorithm at uh, beginning of the function in the comments this is actually usually good way of uh, explaining the algorithm or solution how you are getting different uh, time and space complexities and sometimes uh, i mean um, usually some it may happen right uh, sometimes uh, we might not be able to solve the problem and um, uh, the interviewer might be giving some hints try to uh, i mean uh, listen for the interviewer what he is saying so that uh, you can catch the hints these are the common tips that we can follow during the interviews uh, try to explain the solution for example if i given problem if you have solution try to explain um, what is the solution that you are proposing what are the steps that you are proposing and um, 
uh, for, uh, for example, you get some brute force, explain the brute force solution, what is the time complexity it is getting, what is the space complexity it is getting, and uh, if the interviewer asks for improvement to the same um, uh, solution, keep explaining, uh, I mean, how you are thinking with the different data structures, you are trying with sorting, you are trying with hashing, you are trying with stacks, queues, uh, link list, uh, you mean, uh, you try to explain him, I am trying with different data structures uh, to see whether it works or not for that solution. So that uh, the interviewer will also feel like, uh, okay, you are um, on the proper direction. And while coding the solution, well, for example, uh, you all, um, both the uh, interviewer and uh, the candidate come to a conclusion that, okay, this is a good solution, try to code it. So while coding, uh, try to explain the algorithm before the function, try to put two, three lines of uh, algorithm uh, before the function. And within the function, try to add uh, base conditions, uh, try to put uh, as many as error checks and explain how you are uh, coding and which data structure you are using so that uh, the interviewer will also feel comfort uh, in understanding your solution you will not uh, come to a conclusion that you are not able to solve the problem even if that is not the best solution the interviewer will feel comfort uh, in judging you better and most of the time it is positive feedback the another common question that you all might be having is uh, do we need to participate in online coding competitions uh, to, I mean, um, I keep getting this query very regularly. As we discussed, like most of the tier 1 and tier 2 company interviews, there will be one design question, one data structure and algorithm question. For design questions, uh, most of the time they will not ask for um, coding. They will just ask for uh, um, how do you design the classes and objects. Usually don't, we don't have to worry on uh, coding the design questions. But when it comes to DS and Algos questions, we, usually they ask for coding. If you want to perform well during the coding uh, sessions, you need to be comfortable with any of the programming languages, C, C++, Java, Python or any. But uh, it is not very compulsory uh, to participate uh, in online coding competitions. But if you participate in those uh, coding sessions or coding competitions, you will definitely have extra advantage or extra comfort uh, during the coding. You can even try on our systems or um, any online uh, coding competitions, that is fine. Even if you don't have a um, uh, good rank in those coding competitions, that is also fine. The only thing is, be comfortable with any of the programming language and you should be in a position to code whatever the algorithm that you are proposing. But um, uh, it's not compulsory to participate in uh, online coding competitions like Top Coder, Coding, uh, Google Code Jam, Code Forces, Code Algebra, or Hacker Run, anything. But uh, if you participate in those coding competitions, definitely it will uh, it will add some extra advantage or comfort uh, during the coding. But it is not compulsory. You can try it on the system or you can try it on the paper. That is also fine. But uh, you just need to be comfortable with uh, coding with any of the programming language. You should be in a position to code whatever the algorithm that you are proposing. That is enough. It is not compulsory to proper to participate in uh, online coding competitions and uh, another important thing is uh, most of the data structures and algorithm questions during the tier 1 and tier 2 interviews usually they will be more limited in uh, time that means uh, within 20 or th th 25 minutes or max 30 minutes we have to solve the problem so they give some question for the same question uh, we'll be giving multiple solutions with different time complexity and space complexity during the discussion at the end they will be asking for the coding of that whatever the problem that they are giving. So within 25 minutes we have to complete all the I mean, discussion proposing multiple solutions and uh, analyzing them with the different time complexity space complexities and at the end we have to code the solution that we are giving the best solution whatever they are giving. If you want to complete all this process within 25 or 30 minutes usually the problem statement should be small. They usually mean that they are very logical in nature and most of the time the number of lines of logical data structures and algorithm questions are less than 10 lines. If any code takes more than that, it means the problem statement is bigger which should not be asked in the interviews to judge the candidates. We can say that the interviewers are not much experienced in uh, interviewing. right? So you can take for example uh, finding a loop in a link list. Um, kth node from end of the link list or kth node in um, binary search trace or uh, dynamic programming question. Any question 
the coding and including the coding from the description beginning to ending we should complete within 25 minutes and uh, for most of the data sets and algorithm questions which are logical in nature we can code them in less than 10 lines so just keep that in mind and uh, if the questions are taking more time means either the candidate is not performing well or the interviewer is taking more time and is you don't have much experience in taking the interviews we can just uh, have, keep that in mind. Let us recap uh, what we have discussed in this session. We have discussed that um, for uh, Tier 1 and Tier 2 companies, uh, we need to give focus for data structures and algorithms, any uh, programming language, especially the uh, OOPS language, uh, including design patterns. Um, we need to have knowledge on any scripting language along with the computer science fundamentals and uh, general latest IT trends and technologies. So just keep this in mind. Along with this, we also discussed about uh, what are the tips that we can use for preparing that books and what are the tips that we can follow during the interviews and uh, whether we need to uh, participate uh, in online competitions or not. Just uh, keep all this in mind and uh, prepare the books for tier 1 and tier 2 interviews. I hope you all got clarity on how to use the books and how to prepare for tier 1 companies and tier 2 companies. All the best. Thank you.